welcome to a special edition of Talking Movies from Mumbai. I'm Tom Brook. Today our focus is on one man. He's often referred to as the King of Bollywood. He's 46 years old. He's made some 70 films. He has a charismatic appeal that extends well beyond India's borders. He is Shah Rukh Khan. As a megastar and producer, he is a force to be reckoned with. King of Bollywood. I get amazed they call me that and I think maybe in my deep down inside my heart I feel I don't deserve all this. So I try harder. And maybe that works for me that I keep on being uh, humbler. He has legions of fans, and whether it's at the premiere of his latest film in London or at a promotional event in Mumbai, his fans think that Shah Rukh Khan is it. Everything he does has a style, has a statement which everyone can look forward to. He's charismatic and uh, whatever movies he works in, it just works like magic. He is a man who came out of no connections to any film family. He has worked his way through, he has done his, he's paid his dues, he's worked very hard and grown with the audience. The dimensions of his stardom are mind-boggling. Although his stature has taken a bit of a beating recently, he's still described as the world's biggest film star. Not surprising, given that Bollywood cinema reaches an audience far larger than Hollywood's, an estimated three and a half billion people. To his big-name colleagues in the industry, what enables Shah Rukh Khan to transfix audiences is his humanity. <laughs> He has a very human heart. He's come from Delhi, a middle class family, um, and is a self made man, become everything that he is, one of the I mean the biggest movie star in the country, completely on his own terms. And everyone feels that, you know, if he can do it, I can. And there's a relatability to him, and he's humble. Um, and at the same time, he has, you know, the, the qualities that every mother would want in her child, or every wife would want in her husband, and every kid would want in her, da in her dad. He has all of those in him. So that makes him more than just this movie star who sings you incredible songs. It makes him her, a brand which or a commodity which everyone relates to and hence why he has become more than just a movie star. From the time he first began working as an actor in television almost 30 years ago, Shah Rukh Khan has been a constant presence for Indian audiences, part of their lives. Well Shah Rukh Khan, a very warm welcome to Talking Movies. Let me start off by asking you, when did you actually realize that you could act? and that you could engage with the process and that people would actually respond to your acting? I, I still don't know that, Tom, to be really honest. I, you know, a lot of people, uh, you, you being generous when you say that, that when you do realize that you can act, most of the people still think I can't act. And I don't think so myself. I get so nervous doing it. I know my lines. Uh, I know what I'm trying to play. But there is uh, many a slip you know, between what you think you want to do and the action that you finally do. Sometimes I find myself doing things which I think, am I silly doing this? I'm a very shy person. I'm kind of, as I'm getting older, I'm becoming more and more reclusive. I like to be on my own. I can't go to a party. I can't stand with people. I can't go and buy things on my own in a shop. I can't travel alone. I'm very shy. If an air hostess comes and asks me twice, uh, do you want this? And I'm like, no, I won't eat, but I can't order. I'm like that. And uh, so for this shy person, it becomes a huge, huge uh, gift that I can be somebody else and it's nearly schizophrenic and I can just go and do something and not feel responsible not feel shy, not feel odd, not feel awkward so I actually act just to cover up my awkwardness I've done so many love stories and a lot of my co-actresses and all my friends and ladies I mean, they say, oh you're so romantic I, I've never in my life been able to go and say hello to a girl uh, at a party, the first person I said it to was my wife and I married her quickly and I've never been able to go and uh, uh, chat up a girl I've never been I'm shy of women and I'm a romantic hero who goes and does some really strange thing I go on my knees and I fall in love and I cry and I hug them and I kiss them so I, I do all that that I can't do in real life so I don't know whether I'm acting or whether uh, it's just uh, um, you know voyeuristically living some other life of some other person and then 
quietly this shy boy is looking at him. So um, I, I really don't know. I'm very nervous acting, but I get very thrilled doing it. I, it's a strange dichotomy that I'm very nervous going in the morning and standing in front of the camera, but as long as I'm not me, I'm just very happy doing it. I just feel very thrilled. With your fans, I mean, some of them get very, very intense. Does that concern you that they are so preoccupied, almost uh, obsessional about you? Well, I'm happy. I'm obsessed about them too. <laughs> I really like them. I think uh, it's nice to be had. It's nice to have an obsession. And, uh, and without trying to sound self-important, I think I'm a good obsession to have. I'm kind of okay to obsess with. I'm all right. I will never let you down uh, uh, as an actor, as a person. Uh, I'll work my whole life to make sure that if you've told your friend, you know, this guy is good, uh, I will never let you down as an actor, as a person. And I know uh, people believe when you act in movies that there are other qualities attached to you which necessarily not be true. You know, I'm not as good as they think I am. I'm, you know, I do my stuff and maybe if they met me in real life, they'll get bored by me or they may not like me. But I try to live up to the expectations even in my personal life. It's not a, it's not a difficult task at all because, you know, it's, it's a small ask. Um, I, you have given me so much. I'm so happy to be here. This is the least I can do that I deserve the love. So if they obsess about me and if they say something, I'm quite okay with that. I think you should be obsessed with me. It's absolutely all right. I will be, uh, I'm, I'm a good obsession to have and I will make sure that your obsession doesn't let you down. Do you think because you do have such a powerful following that there's a responsibility to your fans to steer them in the right way to be the right kind of role model? Uh, I'm socially very responsible but very privately so. I don't make a public display. I find it strange to have charity balls. Uh, and it's very Islamic. We don't talk about things that we do in the name of Allah or in the name of charity. So I keep that very private and I'm very happy with that. Um, of course, some causes I lend my name to because it's important people get to know whether it's for uh, typhoid, whether it's for uh, polio. So I do all that. But I just, um, uh, my responsibility to the fans is that I should just tell them how I lead my life. And you make the choice. If you like it, do it. If you don't like it, my life is not the best one to take any cues from. What about brand endorsement though? You do a lot of that. Do you ever get concerned that you might be endorsing products that aren't good for people? There have been times like when it comes to alcohol or cigarettes, uh, which I don't mind endorsing, but I don't because I think in the larger context it's the wrong thing to do. I, I deliberate a lot before I say yes to a brand, unless I'm making a big budget film and I need the money. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, let me just do this. I'm really sorry. You're shameless. Guys. I'm shameless then. I'm, I'm shamelessly, give it to me, it's for a bigger, better cause, for movie making, because that's what I live for. <laughs> When you're talking about cinema, isn't there a need, though, to be responsible? Is it all right for a Bollywood film to portray a, a woman as a very submissive personality? Isn't there a need to perhaps to adjust to more modern conditions? I think so, yes. And I think uh, most of us uh, in the era of the last 15, 20 years, actors, producers, directors, and I think that was the reason uh, in the 90s the films did well with the, the Western audience and in, the, in India also. We started treating women uh, as equals in movies. Otherwise, perhaps we do. We don't know. That's a huge discussion. But uh, in movies, uh, actresses uh, were not just uh, sex pieces. Of course, we still have uh, you know, item songs, what we call in Indian films, where uh, um, you know, girl is bikini clad and does a dance and gyrates and looks really sexy. We actually have item songs with me also. So, I mean, it's not like I'm being mistreated. I think we treat girls and boys equally as long as we can have an item song. But um, I think uh, the last 15, 20 years, I think the role, yeah, we may not have a lot of women dominated films as yet. Uh, those are smaller budget films. And to me, it's a personal, uh, genuinely a personal issue. And a woman not being portrayed rightly in a film. I would never do a film as an actor or as a producer with a woman. Yeah, you can be naughty, you can be sweet, you can you know, crack a few jokes. But overall, a woman's treatment in a film should be top class as uh, they should be treated. As a matter of fact, I think most of my love stories are done well for me because I treated women very well in my film and the storytelling. More than personally, I think my storytelling treated women as equal. I think that's one reason people think I'm a good romantic hero because my girls have always been respected. <laughs> क्या करूँ हाय कुछ कुछ होता है 
Shah Rukh Khan is well known for his romantic roles, but he's a reflective actor and producer who's stirred by real life events. He's a Muslim in a country where Hindus far outnumber Muslims. Last year, he addressed the issue of Muslim profiling set against the backdrop of post 9 11 America in the film My Name is Khan. I, I, I personally believe, uh, and not only because I'm Muslim, uh, but I, you, know, you read the newspaper, you see the world around, and there was this whole, uh, uh, you know, uh, two, uh, uh, a very clean divided line that was being made in misunderstanding that all Muslims are terrorists. And I thought I should be one of the few people, at least in India, to tell people that being Muslim is not necessarily being a terrorist or a bad guy or, uh, you know, uh, the world should not be divided like this. You know, one world and one Islamic world, no. Because that will create more problems. So I do try, once in a way, to have some issue-based films with songs and dances, with the trappings and the parameters of commercial cinema. Uh, but uh, now, as years are going by, I'm doing it more often. You know, uh, but the next one I want to do, I just want to do a madcap um, romantic comedy, just over-the-top demented one, because I get tired sometimes, you know, trying to have an issue and so many things to handle in a film. But I want to do like a madcap comic comedy, so I just relax and then get back to another issue-based thought. You are, it goes without saying, an incredibly successful actor. Have you found that being a Muslim has ever put you at a disadvantage career-wise, or are you aware of discrimination against you? No, not at all. I think the Indian film industry is the most secular uh, place to find a job in. Um, I don't even know if anybody knows anybody else's religion while we're working together. The religion is entertainment and happiness and colors and dancing and, you know, just uh, telling a story. Uh, I've never been disadvantaged as far as uh, being a Muslim is concerned in this industry or in this country. My kids are being brought up in all kinds of religions. My wife is Hindu, actually. So we, we've never had this issue, I think, as secular as we are in this house, in my own private life, film industry has been like that. And I think I personally have been treated by the film industry more, uh, in, in the nicest way possible, more than any other actor in the last 30, 40 years. Coming up on Talking Movies, more from Mumbai and our interview with Shah Rukh Khan. What does the Indian superstar think is the way forward for Indian cinema? Shah Rukh Khan's most recent big screen adventure has been putting together and starring in Ra One, described as India's most expensive film to date. It's a superhero picture laden with state-of-the-art special effects. It opened strongly at the box office. Although the special effects were seen as impressive, some critics thought it weak in terms of its storytelling. For Shah Rukh Khan, the concept of a superhero has long had appeal. I come from a lower middle class background, always wanted to be a superhero. Uh, I didn't know uh, what excuse to use to make a film of this genre, which is not very popular in India. Uh, science fiction come superhero. And um, didn't have the, um, the budgets, or I didn't have the status, or even the resources. And then my children grew up, so I found the excuse first. And now I can say my kids would want a film like this. But actually, the truth is I wanted to make one. That after having worked so many years in the industry, having got all that I mm, exist because of, I think it's time I did something which makes everyone else in the world, Indians, everyone from the subcontinent feel, oh wow, this is a cool looking Indian film. Clearly, I mean, from what you're telling me, it is an indigenous Indian film, but to what extent is it a response to Hollywood? Because Hollywood films are coming into the Indian market, superhero films that have a, a very high standard of special effects. Has that been a factor at all? Yes, uh, um, absolutely. I mean, I would be able to say this without uh, batting an eyelid of the comparisons if they are made. Uh, if you keep the fact that obviously we have not, uh, uh, we don't have those kind of budgets, but within that limitation also, all the effects will be international quality. I mean, that I'm very, very clear on. That's the first thing we wanted to do. There should be no excuse for saying, oh, for an Indian film, it's good. I want every youngster, third generation around the world from the subcontinent to feel very proud of it. So, you know what? Yeah, we know Bollywood is kids. Yeah, we have song and dancing. We're a little over the top. But, you know, we make really cool looking films. So, the film is very good looking on that front. The effort for this film is to retain the Indian audience first, which the world is looking at. And, you know, we should not ignore that. We need to make sure that we look at that audience first, which the world is looking at. And, of course, as the international studios are coming in, uh, my thing to everyone as a producer is, listen, you give me the technology and the screenplay know-how so I can better my Indian films, not allow just those films. You're most welcome to come and show your films and 
be very happy with a free nation and we love your films but we need to retain uh, our Indian film uh, viewership intact because that's one of the only entertainment things we have in this country. India with all its richness and vibrancy and humanity is depicted in Bollywood films but Shah Rukh Khan has taken note of how outsiders portray his country. Three years ago, the hugely popular Oscar-winning Slumdog Millionaire presented a big international audience with images of India. It was a British-made film that wasn't uniformly liked in India, with many viewing it as Mumbai seen through the prism of Western eyes. Slumdog Millionaire, incredibly successful film, but some people maintain that that film was really selling the sadness of India. What's your take on that? I'd, I'd be uh, uh, hypocritical if I say, yeah, because I was going to make that film. Uh, I had wanted to purchase it to make it in my production house with myself because I was doing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire at that time, I was hosting the show. So I wanted to make it. Now if I wanted to make it in India, for India, I, I don't think I can say that yeah, I had sold the sadness of the country. I thought it, it, I like the smartness of the film. I like the simplicity that 10 questions and somehow those 10 things have happened to you in life. Of course, when a Western uh, filmmaking unit comes to India, they are not actually trying to sell. See, when a Western film comes down to India, they're actually not trying to sell the sadness of India. They're just so amazed by uh, the difference in lifestyles of Indians and uh, in the West. Uh, Western world coming and selling whatever intrigues them is fair, but an Indian selling um, the sadness of India I think is unfair because uh, I should be telling and showcasing the other aspects of India because I know India well enough. I know that India is not just that. It's not on the face of it, this shocking truth. There are some other truths also, which perhaps you don't know. So, uh, Slumdog as such, I thought the story was nice. I wanted to make it myself. Have you ever been tempted to try to build up a career in Hollywood? I mean, Bollywood you have conquered, but what about Hollywood, the American film industry? And there are two things, Tom. One, I don't think uh, anybody's looking for an actor who's 45 years old, um, who's uh, brown, who speaks uh, English kind of all right without the accent. Um, and I don't have any special thing to offer. You know, a Jackie Chan has. Uh, I don't think I have anything special to offer to Hollywood, which it already doesn't have, and even better, whether it's Mr. Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise or Johnny Depp. You have actors of that age group who are fantastic, so they don't need anyone from here unless somebody's doing a film about an Indian and they need an Indian character, an uh, Indian actor to play the character, then maybe I would get a chance. I've, I've got a script, and I would love to. I would love to. It's a good script. But it's not to make inroads into Hollywood. I would just do it because it's based in India and it'd be great to work with all these great uh, people. But uh, one is that reason, so I've never had an agent or a manager or even when I've been offered, I'm like, no, listen, I'm, I'm not going there for six, eight months and, you know, just doing a film where I have to speak like an Indian. I, I don't want to do that. Uh, there were some roles which are offered like that, you know. So I love Peter Sellers having done that, but I don't like doing it myself. Um, the second part is, I'm really, uh, because of the 20 years of uh, consistent uh, success, if I can call it that, that I've received or uh, I've been able to work without a break, I have now started believing that I can be one of those leading filmmakers from my country who can make a purely Indian film and get the whole world to watch it. That's quite a challenge though, isn't it? I mean, you have not really had a film like that that's been able to cross over to satisfy audiences in the West and in India. Yeah, but like I said, that's why the wishes should be like that. It should be like a big wish. It should be an unachievable wish. So I'll keep tirelessly working towards that. And I also feel we can't be making... Uh, I don't want to sell the poverty and the culture and the snake charmers of India. I want to sell um, the educated middle class of India. I want to tell them there's a lot of intelligence here, intellect here, rich here, happiness here, colourful culture here. Do you think that there are difficulties with Indian storytelling, not for people in India, but that don't translate easily to, to Western audiences? Yeah, I think our screenplay techni technique needs to improve a lot more. Uh, we do a film in three acts. Um, the Western world is used to seeing it in two acts. Um, songs, we make musicals. Uh, you know, that format needs to change. We can still have the music, but maybe not so um, obtrusively in, in your face dancing on the streets maybe. Uh, but all that can change and we can still retain the music and everything. But I do believe the Western audience likes to be told, they are more video literate. Uh, there's more video literacy I think in the Western audience. They've been exposed to more video than the Indians have been. So we do spend a lot more time. We are less brief in storytelling uh, than the Western audience. I think yes, 
uh, if we want to sell a film, a dream overseas, internationally, it will have to be initially written by uh, screenplay writers from the West. So I think yes, 100%, the screenplay writing and storytelling uh, technique, I'm not saying the story, the stories we have fantastic, but that technique will have to be adapted to uh, the Western style of listening to a story. Well, it's been a great pleasure listening to you, and thank you very much indeed. Is there one musical sequence that you're particularly proud of that we could use to actually finish off our interview with you? I'm uh, very thrilled with Chanya Chanya in a film called Dilse. Uh, it's a top of train without any harnesses, and I've danced my heart out. Chaya, <laughs> <laughs>